Tony Soprano, my God, what this guy had to deal with. He had to deal with the government. He had to deal with informants. He had to deal with the crew. He had to deal with a mother that was trying to get him killed and an uncle that was undermining him. Sounds a little bit like my life. sit down with Michael Francis. How is everybody doing? It is Monday, uh, December 21st, and hey, we're four days away from Christmas. Hope everybody's ready, got your shopping done. Uh, you're in the Christmas spirit, everybody's ready to go. I know we're going through some struggles, but hey, it's Christmas, man. We gotta just lift those spirits as best as we could. And uh, today is Mob Monday, um, <laughs> Mob Movie Monday, let me get it right. And uh, we're gonna continue on The Sopranos today. Now, some, some of you people in the comments have said, Michael, you said you didn't watch the whole series, so how can you review the comments? Well, you weren't listening. I said we're gonna do season one. We're gonna talk about season one. There was 86 episodes to The Sopranos. It was a very complicated, involved dynamic going on, and we're gonna get through a lot of it, but I can't obviously do it in 15 minutes, but there's some things that I wanna talk about today. Again, art imitating life. And I gotta tell you, I, I'm watching the series again, and before, when I watched it, it was sporadic. You know, I kind of, you know, jumped around, saw an episode here and there, but now I'm really watching it. And I gotta tell you, it, it is just brilliant. It really is. It's a brilliant series. It was the series that kind of kicked off all of the other great series that have happened since. It was groundbreaking. It really was. And, uh, you know, since Sopranos, I've gotten into so many great series that I've seen on television. Television writing today is brilliant. The acting is brilliant. Direction is brilliant. They've come a long, long way. I actually enjoy uh, these series better than I do, you know, most movies that are out there. Just, just brilliant. So we're going to get into that. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Tony Soprano. Uh, I never realized just how great uh, Gandolfini was in that role, but he just really nailed it. And I'm going to get into that in a way that I will describe how that art in The Sopranos imitated life. But before I do that, I've got something um, special to announce today. Last night, we hit 300,000 subscribers, and we did it in five months. Now, let me make that clear. I had a YouTube channel going back several years, but I didn't even know I had it. I wasn't using it, somebody created it for me. We never posted any videos, maybe one. I think uh, an intro video was put up there, but we never used it. We didn't start posting videos until July 3rd of this year, and from July 3rd on, uh, we, um, we got 300,000 subscribers in five months. That's, that's pretty darn good, and I owe that all to you. You know, you're enjoying the content, you're coming on, and we really, really appreciate it. And as a sign of gratitude, we got some special that we're gonna offer you. We're gonna have a giveaway. Now, here's how it's gonna go. We're gonna give away some free things for everybody that participates. Now, here's what's gonna happen. Leave your questions, any question at all or comment that you wanna to make to me, leave it in this video in the comments section. We're gonna go through as many as we possibly can. We get you know hundreds, sometimes thousands, often thousands, but we're gonna go through them. And then on Wednesday the 30th, we're gonna have a Q&A where I'm gonna address many of these comments. You know, the most popular, the ones that we think are the best. Me and my team are gonna go through them. So we're gonna have Q&A Wednesday, put it on your calendar, on the 30th. It might be live, it might be just me doing a YouTube, I don't know, my team hasn't figured that out yet, but we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna address the comments and the questions that you leave today at the end of this video. That's number one. Number two, there is a link at the bottom, uh, uh, there's a link within here someplace, again, I don't do the technical stuff, but it's here. Go to that link because you're gonna be able to enter into the giveaway. Um, and there's certain things that we want you to do, you know, maybe make a comment, maybe, you know, join us on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, nothing complicated, but all the details will be there. And we're going to have a giveaway of a lot of things. Number one on the giveaway is a one hour Zoom call with me where you can ask me anything that you want, anything at all. There's nothing off limits. Ask me anything you want. I'm pretty open in answering questions. So the, the first prize winner gets a one hour Zoom call with me but you're not gonna be doing it from your phone. 
because you're gonna be doing it from a computer uh, that we're gonna be giving you. We're gonna give you a, a Mac top, Mac, whatever it's called, MacBook computer. Uh, that's the first prize. And on that computer, you're gonna have a Zoom call with me. So yes, 12, 13, 14, $1,500 value, whatever it is, that's the main giveaway. We're gonna be giving away a lot of my books. We're gonna be giving away a one-year subscription to my Inner Circle Coaching. You're gonna get it for free. We're gonna give a number of these away. Uh, again, some books and some other things. We're putting together a nice package <clears throat> of giveaways, and that's just a sign of gratitude for all of you that have been so loyal and have, uh, have come onto this site in the last several months. And we encourage those of you uh, that are looking in and are not subscribing, subscribe, because we're gonna be doing this uh, uh, sporadically because we appreciate, we really do. We put a lot of effort into this. Believe me, you know, the whole setup is, is a lot. And uh, we really appreciate those of you that continue to come in and that do subscribe. And we're gonna show our gratitude throughout the year, every year. So thank you very much. Remember, leave your comment now. Q&A Wednesday is uh, on the 30th. We're giving a giveaway, first prize Zoom call with me on a new laptop computer that we will be sending you as a result of that day. So that's it, all right? So we're excited about it. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart, my team's heart, uh, for uh, you know making this milestone of 300,000 and it's climbing every day. And again, thanks to you, we really appreciate it. So let's get into The Sopranos. Tony Soprano, uh, you know, what an amazing character he really is. He, he and, and I want you to understand something, why I'm relating to him so much now. You know, I'm watching it in a different way. The first time, ah, it's a mob thing, it was the first one out, how good it could be, how good could it be? But now I'm really realizing what a great job David Chase did with this, the characters, how he really nailed it. So let's get into Tony Soprano, and I want to compare it to real life mob guy. Now, Tony, look at all the look at all the things that he had to go through, the, the the things in life that he had to juggle. And you know what? You may not be in the mob, but think of your own, think of your own life, and think of being somebody like Tony Soprano with all the things that he had had to handle. What does that mean? Well, first of all, he had to handle his family, which was totally dysfunctional, totally dysfunctional. I mean, his kids, look at them the way they were. His wife, look what his wife had to put up with with him, every day wondering what this guy was really all about. You know, what was he involved in? Is he going to get arrested? Is he going to get killed? Is he hijacking a truck? How are the guys around him? Could they really be trusted? Look what this woman had to go through. And you know what? My mother, the same thing. My wife, to a degree, the same way. All the, all the wives of the, of the mob guys that I know, same thing. But let's get to Tony for a second. Tony's got to juggle his crew. Got to worry about who he's got around him. Now look, you know, you know there was one guy, um, the Pastore character, he was a snitch for a long time. You know, he was working with the government for a long time. You know, he was suspected for a while. Tony loved this guy. He didn't want to hear it. But you know what happens? If you're found out to be an informant and you're working with the government, doesn't matter if it's your best friend, your brother, your cousin, your uncle, you got to go. And Tony's struggling with this and worrying about, you know, whether this guy really is an informant, somebody that he loves. It's crushing inside. I know. I experienced that. I got to tell you, when we found out that Greg Scarpa, even though I wasn't, you know, I didn't love Greg Scarpa, but we had a lot of involvement because he was a captain. I was a captain. You know, I was around him for 20 years. We find out he's an informant. Oh, my God. You know, what's going to happen? Discussions that we had, sit downs that we were out, guys that got killed. You know, what's going to happen? Is he going to implicate us? Well, Tony's got to think about all of that with somebody very, very close to him. Right. Do you wonder why this guy was going to a psychiatrist? I know a lot of guys that could have, should have went to a psychiatrist. Look, I told you in an earlier video about two close made guys, guys that were very close to me, one of them, the two brothers. One of them, I happened to drive home one day. I'm not gonna mention his name. I happened to drive home one day. I drop him off at his house. I'm ready to pull away. He says, Michael, wait, don't leave. I said, okay. He goes to the front door of his house. He's ringing the bell, puts the key in the door, looks in. I see him calling for somebody. He pulls the door closed, comes back to the car. I says, what happened? He says, well, nobody's home. I says, so why does somebody have to be home? You're going into your own house. He says, you don't understand. Ever since I killed my father, and he killed his father. His father allegedly, his father rather was another made guy and allegedly was fooling around with uh, somebody else's wife or daughter, whatever it might have been. 
I don't know all the details of it, uh, but the two brothers killed the father. As a result, he said he could never be in his house alone because the ghost of his father haunts him from the minute he walks in the door. You don't think you need a therapist or a psychiatrist when you got that on your mind? It had been 30 years since he was in his house alone. Think about it. So now Tony's got to deal with, with maybe his best friend as an informant. Tony's got to, got to worry about the government getting on him all the time. I had those worries. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. When I Rizzo turned informant, or when we got in trouble, rather, Frankie G came to me. And he said to me, Chief, this guy is not going to stand up. Let me take care of him. Let me do it. Now, I knew in my heart that Ira Rizzo was not going to stand up. I knew it. He was 600 pounds or whatever the hell he was, 550 pounds. I knew he couldn't do the time. I knew that I was his, his ticket out of jail. I knew the government wanted me. But you know what? I couldn't do it. I says, gee, I know his wife. I know his kids. His kids call me uncle. My kids call him Uncle Larry. I said, I can't do it. I said, if he goes bad, we'll fight him the right way. I just couldn't do it. Now, I'm not saying, you know, that I couldn't do what I had to do when I was told to do something, but I couldn't do that to my, to my friend, even though I knew he was going to hurt me at one point in time. So you got to struggle with this, though, because now, you know, what's going to happen? This guy can turn informant. He can put you away for the rest of your life, destroy you and your family. So this is on your mind. Tony now, Tony Soprano, what? His own mother turned on him, was undermining him with his uncle. His, his father's brother, they were undermining Tony, could have got him killed. Be honest with you, I went through the same thing. My mother wasn't all there. My mother put me in a position at times, I don't know what her deal was. I think I told that story one time before, when she put me on Front Street, right in front of the boss of our family, Ali Boyd Persico at that time. He was running things while Junior, his brother, was away. Could have got me killed, really. And, and, and I don't know why she did it. Was it jealous? I mean, who knows? You know, I don't know what was going on in her mind. She wasn't all there. But I had to worry about my mother, too, because my mother did things not only to embarrass my father, but to embarrass me and put me in trouble because she wasn't, you know, the type of, of uh, wife that, you know, people think is the stereotype. Like they just sit there and mind their own business and they don't ever say anything. It's not like that. It was a lot like Carmela. She told Tony straight out when she had to tell him off. You know, she told him, you know, she was a strong woman. My mother was a strong woman, too strong at, at times. You know, she had too much of a big mouth at times. I got to say it. I love my mom. She passed away in 2012. But dysfunctional family, because it's not normal when you're married to a guy who, who's a criminal, you know, who, whose routine is to come home and eat dinner and then go out at 9 or 10 o'clock at night, not come back till 3 or 4 in the morning. That's not normal stuff. Well, what is he doing during that time? So this is what the wives have to think about. You know, the kids, the same thing. They go to school. Hey, your father's a mafia guy. They see stuff in the house. Tony cussing every other, you know, word out of his mouth. The mother, you know, undermining Tony when they're at the dinner table. This isn't, this is dysfunctional stuff. But just think about it. I can understand Tony going to therapy. However, you know, people want to point out to me when I say, if a mob boss was ever visiting a therapist, he'd be in the trunk of the car by the end of the week. Well, that comes out in the show. Tony tells his Car Carmella, hey, if they find out this, I'm going to get killed. You're not allowed to do that because what are you telling the therapist? You saw some of his crew guys wondering. You saw the guy Capuano, if you remember, because he remember the scene in the car when he's talking to another guy. He doesn't realize the guy is very close to Tony and he's telling Tony, you know, about things that he did with his mother. He's telling Tony, uh, he's telling the guy rather about that Tony's going to a therapist. And what happened? All right, the guy gets out of the car, shoots him in the head, killed him because he's yapping his mouth because you can't do those kind of things. You can't go see a therapist. Now everybody says, oh, well, Costello was seeing a, a therapist. He was seeing a psychiatrist for a short time. He gave it up. And because he was who he was, he made a deal. He walked away from that life and, and, and nothing happened to him at that point in time. That's an exception. That's not the rule. But man, watching this series, this first um, uh, season, really, really got to me seeing the dynamic. It was like, again, art imitating life and wondering all the stuff that we had to go through. You know, when you become as high profile as I became, you know, 18 arrests, 
seven indictments, two federal racketeering cases, a state racketeering case in Florida, the government on you constantly. And I don't know if you know this, if I mentioned it before, but there was a 14 agency task force that used to meet, but there was a 14 agency task force that used to meet in the courthouse in Uniondale, Long Island, all different agencies that had one mission, and that was to put me into, in jail for life. That's what I had to deal with. So were there informants around me? Yeah, they developed informants. So I'm worried about that. I'm worried about my wife and kids. I'm worried about the guys around me. You know, as a, as a cop of the regime, I had men under me that I had to be concerned with. I had to worry about, you know, my boss and not making a mistake that could put me in trouble with all the money that I was making. I mean, there's so much going on. So Tony had to deal with all of this. He had to keep his crew guys in order, had to try to keep his family in order. And then what happens? His sister comes home, total wreck, you know, because Tony's father was involved in a way. His sister was a basket case. Listen, I got to be honest. I remember one day my sister Gia, you know, God rest her soul, she passed away in, uh, in, um, in the 90s, drug overdose. But the relationship that she had with my mother was toxic. I remember coming in one day and I seen my mother and my sister Gia wrestling on the floor with each other. I mean, going at it, really going at it. I had to pick them up and pull them apart because my mother was upset with her with her drug stuff. And, you know, my, my sister Gia felt that my mother never really loved her. She wanted to get close to her. My mother was, was kind of, uh, you know, she wasn't an easy woman to warm up to. So all of this stuff going on, and it's, you know, I encourage you to watch series one because you're gonna see all of this develop. And Tony Soprano is a brilliant character. His dialogue is great. The way he handles things is great. The one thing I don't like, a lot of his men talk back to him. I never saw a made guy talk back to his cop regime, never. When I was a cop, nobody would talk back to me, not disrespectfully. And I seen Christopher do that with Tony. Never saw that before. All right, so that to me didn't work. Uh, but everything else about that series one was, was pretty accurate, pretty right on. And I'm, I mean, season one. And I'm going to go through each season because I started watching season two. And, man, it's really developing into something. So this is, this is a great series. Go back and watch it. It's HBO Go, wherever you got to go. Go back and watch it. And remember, this was the groundbreaking series that started everything with all these great series. If it wasn't for... for uh, um, uh, the Sopranos, I don't think Netflix would be what it is because Netflix is really built on their uh, original material that they develop into series, not movies, but series. And I think that Sopranos really was the groundbreaking series that caused all of this. So you should appreciate it. So that's it for today. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, I want to, again, thank everybody, 300,000 subscribers, michaelfrancis.com, become a member of the crew. We had a great Zoom call yesterday with my inner circle, an hour and a half. People asked questions. They were so encouraged. I wish I could send you some of the comments from people that are in the crew. And again, somebody come back and say, Michael, you're asking me for 40 bucks to join your crew. No, I'm not. If you go into our free site, michaelfrancis.com, you become a crew member. It's free. We give you stuff. We don't ask for stuff in return. Now, if you want a little bit more of me and you want my time and you want some other content that we're putting in, well, there is a fee. It's not going to break the bank. It's small. And remember, OK, if you go on to that link and you enter into the, the contest or the giveaway, I should call it. It's not a contest. The giveaway. All right. We're going to give away um, some crew memberships in a circle. You're going to be invited in. OK, for free. So. That's it for today, Christmas week. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to be posting another video tomorrow or Wednesday. I'm not sure which, but uh, stay tuned. And uh, I'll have a special Christmas message uh, for all of you um, because it is a special week in the heart of all Christians and for all of those of you that, uh, that believe in God and believe in Jesus Christ, special week. So go out and enjoy it. So how do I always end this? Be safe, be healthy. God bless you all. And I will see you next time.